Hello and welcome to another uh, session of recording of chapter one, uh, CSE 259. In this, we will have a quick overview of the ONS algorithm uh, with a couple of examples. Uh, so let's see how the hand algor horns algorithm can be used for testing satisfiability. The first part is the definition of horns uh, formula and horns clause. A horns formula uh, can be written in this following format. Uh, uh, so P is uh, either a bottom or a top, sorry for the error in this, uh, or a literal P. Uh, so it can be only uh, true. Uh, this represents true. This represents false. And P is a literal. Uh, that's just some variable. Uh, so something like it can be X or it can be X. Uh, it can be Y, P, Q, just like that. It cannot have uh, any other format. That is, it cannot be a formula of, this, of the type P, uh, X, and Y. Uh, so now P is cannot be of this type. Okay. So the next part is the A. A can either be uh, P, that is, it can be true, false, or just a simple uh, mm -hmm. proposition P, or it can be a combination of propositions like P and A. So then A can be of the format X and Y and P. So this holds. Then now let's look at the third step. C is of the type A implies P. So that means a formula of the type X and Y and P implies a proposition P, a simple P or a not or a true. So uh, a clause can be of the type, C can be of the type. So C is of the type X and Y and P implies P. So this is correct clause. X and Y and P implies false. This also is a right clause. And finally, a Hans formula H is either C or conjunctions of C and H. So it can be conjunction of multiple implications. Now, one important thing that you need to remember is the way you can write implications. Uh, well, uh, before I go into that, C is Hans clause. So any formula of this type are called Hans clauses. That is, if you remove the conjunctions between Hans clauses and take only the clauses, only the uh, sub formulas, removing the conjunctions, then we have Hans clauses. Now, one important point you need to remember is that of how do you represent implications and uh, representing implications in uh, in terms of R uh, is very simple. So it, you can end up quite easily missing that out. So A implies B is same as not A or B. Remember this, do not forget. So if I can have a formula of the type uh, not X or not y or z then this can be written as x and y not of x and y or z so this is equivalent to x and y implies z now do you clearly see this is of the type of the format c over here so this is a horns clause so remember that if you get disjunctions and negation of disjunctions, you can convert them into horn clauses. Now, keeping this much in mind, let's move towards seeing 
how the Hans algorithm is. I'm going to give only an overview of the algorithm and then use it to do a couple of examples. And uh, the actual algorithm is in page 67 of your textbook. Uh, it'll be good if you can read it just to know how the algorithms, how, how would you write an algorithm? Okay. So the uh, algorithm goes as follows that first you identify all the clauses. Some of them will have values that are marked as two. So you can say for a simple proposition, PK, uh, PK is equal to true has been marked as a basic value in your formulas or in your sub formulas. So then you mark all of them to true. That's the step one. Step two is taking all these clauses, try to resolve these clauses to get what is the value of P. So here you need to remember the truth table of implication. So A implies B. Now this is true if A is false. So if you consider A being false, B being false, A being false, true, true, false, 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 A implies B is true, true, false, true. It is, if A is true, then B has to be, sorry about this here. If A is true, then B has to be true. If A is not true, if A is false, it doesn't matter what the value of B, or we say B is inconclusive in English. Whereas if A, in logic, if A is false, then B can be either true or false, A implies B will be true. So remember this and using this, you can mark out the values of B or of P in our case. So given P1 to PKI, you can decide the value of P. So remember this, you need to mark out each of these clauses to be either true or false. That's what this algorithm is doing. For this, first we'll have to mark out what would be the conjunctions resulting in. Now for this to be true, all PKIs, all PJs have to result in a true. For P to be true, all PJs, P1 to PK have to be true. If any of the PKIs is false, P will end up being false. That is, if any of them being false, then we have this entire thing becomes inconclusive. P can take either true or false. If all P1 to PKI are true, P cannot be false. That's from the rule of implication the truth table of implication, okay? So I repeat, I repeat myself again over here. The first, write out all the clauses that are there. Then decide the values of available propositions P1 to PKI. Now, if all of them are true, then assign the value true to P. So this is the step two. If, so go about doing this in a loop until all your clauses are marked out. If any of them turns out such that it is false, that means P is already marked to false or bottom. And then P1 and P2 and dot 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 and PKI goes to bottom. Whereas this P1 and P2 and dot, 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 PKI is true. Then this results in a false clause. 
if if this results in a false clause, then we say it is unsatisfiable. Otherwise, if we end up putting all our clauses as true, it is satisfiable. This is the algorithm. So let me explain the algorithm once more quickly. First, pick up all the clauses that are available and remember from here that your clauses are of the type A implies P. So these are your clauses. For each clause, first try to decipher the values of PJs. So each PJ either is a true or false. Now, some of these can result from directly from what you have as values. Once you have got this, try to solve each clause to a true or false. If a clause turns out to be false, then your entire formula is unsatisfiable. If a clause turns out to be true, if all the clauses turn out to be true, your formula is satisfiable. That's as simple as the algorithm. So now let's look at an example over here. So P and Q and S goes to false and Q and R goes to P and truth goes to S. So now let's write out our clauses. So my first clause is P and Q and S goes to bottom. So this is one. Q and R goes to P, this is 2, and 3 is truth goes to S. So this is 3. So these are my three clauses, okay? So I've put the values, uh, I've put the formulas for the Horn's formula over here, okay? So H, this is H. From this, I've got my Cs. Now, from 3, P, S is true. So assign S is true. Okay. Now this is call this four. Now applying this into one, one holds only if P and Q goes to bottom. Otherwise, if P and Q also goes to true, then P and Q and S will be true, resulting in this becoming, this entire clause becoming false, which is not the case. So this is from four and one. Now call this five. Now for P and Q to be false, there are multiple options. One, P is bottom, Q is true. In this case, what happens to formula true? Formula two. So this implies bottom or R goes to goes to true. This is from two. So this implies R is true or R is false. Satisfies two. Second option is P is, I'm sorry, P is true and is bottom, false. Sorry, in the first case it is P is true and Q is false. So let me take the second case where P is false and Q is true. So this implies truth and R 
goes to false from two. So false, I'm representing it as bottom over here. This is from two. So this implies R is bottom for two to be true. Now continuing here on the top. Third case is P is false and Q is false. Very clearly P and Q cannot be true. So we don't have that case. So only there is the third case. In which case we have bottom and R implies bottom. Now, this is true for R or R is bottom. So hence, all the clauses are true, so H is satisfiable. So this is all we have to write out for each of the possible clauses, whether it holds true or not. Let's look at another example, and I suppose this is much simpler to understand. Uh, this is a false example where we uh, have the Holmes clauses uh, not holding true. So the first one, uh, so let's write out the clauses over here. Uh, so the first clause is P and Q and an S implies bottom. So this is one, not Q and R implies P. This is two and the third one is If you remember, what should A, this is A and this is P, right? So taking the second uh, clause, so from two, A is of the form, not Q and R, while P can be true or bottom or a predicate, uh, a proposition P, not Q does not satisfy One's formula. Hence, it is, hence, it is unsatisfiable. Suppose this is much easier than the previous case. So for further understanding, please have a look at the textbook, the algorithm written in page uh, 67 and read further. Uh, if you have any further questions, you can reach out to us. Thank you.